and see our neighbors deported and see our young people with so much promise pushed out of this country because of the current administration. So I want to thank everybody for coming. I couldn't be more excited. But they knew you were coming. And so they brought out the entire police force. <laughs> and and when, I, when I first got here, they told me I couldn't put my signs out there. And if I didn't get in my car immediately, I was under arrest. Oh my God. And then I called on my few hundred friends. <laughs> so we're going to start, now that the bus is here, with a prayer. Um, and I invite Reverend John Jackson from Trinity United Church of Christ, one of our most fervent fighters for freedom in the city of Gary. All right. Let us pray. God of justice, God of liberation, God of hope, God of the radical welcome, God who says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. The God who comforts the afflicted, those who are under fear of deportation, the afflicted, comfort those families who live in fear because of policies that oppress and break families apart, comfort. God, send your presence in this rally. Strengthen each of us in the struggle to stand on the side of a God who does not deport, but a God who brings together. To stand on the side of a God who does not build walls, but builds bridges for people to come together. We stand on the side of that God against policies and principles that would oppress people. So strengthen every person here, encourage every person here, give hope to each and every person here. And to that God, we give honor, glory, dominion, and power. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm also the president of Council 5024. I was in Washington last week um, lobbying with the senators on behalf of DACA and our dreamers. Okay, uh, yes, um, the renewal of the DACA students was over yesterday, but we still support our DACA students because they come from families and they have uh, done a lot. Uh, we also support our dreamers and we are pushing for re, uh, the Real Dreamers Act. Okay, the Bill the Real Dreamers Act. Because our families are, you know, our students are studying, they're working, the families are working. Why, you know, they're tearing our families apart here in Northwest Indiana and taking them off, you know? And this is not fair, you know? They are hardworking students, they are hardworking families and yes, we are supporting them. Right. We are supporting them in their schools and their efforts of, of their work and also in, in everything that they do in Northwest Indiana. They are good people. 
Thank you very much. We are so happy today to have the broadest labor support we've ever had. If an SEIU Local 1 provided us with the bus, and the healthcare local brought the gang down. Yes. We have support of UAW 551. Yes. We have the Western Region of UE. Yes. We are endorsed by USW Local 1010. Yes. We have Local 1 of Unite Here. This is wonderful because unions need to stand always with the brothers and sisters who are immigrants and who are workers. So I'd like to invite Ramel to come up and say a word from A. Philip Randolph Institute of Black Workers and Other Supporters. Thank you. Uh, my name is Romel Bryant. I am a executive board member of the APRI Northwest Indiana chapter, and we're just here today to support um, the injustices against these uh, the immigrants and the um, deportations. We we won't stand for it. We will continue to fight. And if you all need us, give us a call. We're here. We're here to support. And we're here. Listen. People power. Okay, I'd like to invite Reina. Oh, stop complaining. <laughs> Reina from SEIU. Okay, I'm here because I feel that deportations are very unjust. I feel that these people are here to work. They're not, he they're not criminals. They are workers, and our union, our local HCII, has a lot of immigrants that are um, working, and we are here to support them. We don't want them to be deported. We don't want anybody to be deported from here. And I see that uh, Gary, why does Gary have to be the one that has to deport everyone? We just can't stand these deportations, and we're here to support the, to stop the deportations. Yes. Yes. Gracias. But our labor support extends beyond this area, so I'd like to invert, invite Herbert Claros, who came all the way from Brazil. Erecto, ¿dónde está? Stand over there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know I speak English very well, but I will try, because... Spanish. No, doesn't speak Spanish. Do not speak Spanish. <laughs> well, yes, I will try in English, because the international struggle don't have words, no, no have borders. This is no border, no have different language. But uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be here with, with us. Uh, the immigrants, uh, the, the struggles of the immigrants is very important not only United States, not only in South America, but United the world. The, the problem with the immigrants in Europe, the north of Africa, the Syria is a big cri human crisis. Uh, but it's a, it's a very shame for the United States uh, 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 the, f the form that uh, the, wor the immigrant workers have a treatment here. It's a shame. Uh, I'm a Brazilian, uh, I'm a metal worker in Brazil, I'm a member of a CSP Colutas, the CSP Colutas is a national trade union federation in Brazil, we represent a public and private workers in Brazil, we have many problems in Brazil uh, uh, of immigrants, because Brazil use the Bolivian and the Paraguay immigrants to work in factors of test factors, but is a slave conditions in Brazil. It's, it's a shame for us in Brazil too, because the international struggle for the, for the workers, the international struggle for bad con, be, uh, best condition for the workers, the, the international struggle for uh, the rights of the immigrants is the, the is the is the fight of the all workers around the world. Because this, I'm I'm very proud. Uh, I'm here 
to, to us and I think this struggle is possible defeat defeat the government not only Trump but all uh, governments uh, around the world thank you so much we have a fabulous contingent here from Chicago Fight for 15. We would love them to start a chapter here. <laughs> but I would like to invite Parrish and Teresa to come up. Hello, how everybody doing? Good, how about you? Um, my name is Paris Thomas. I'm a fast food worker at Popeyes from Chicago, Illinois. And um, we're here today because we're standing with the immigrants that's being deported. Uh, we know it's not fair. We come here and fight hard for our families to live and be free. And it's not fair that we have to be deported. So that's why I'm here today, standing up for all you guys that's fighting hard and don't want to be deported. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Teresa Cervantes, soy trabajadora de Macanas. ¿Te puedo acercar a la micrófono? Gracias. Déjame estar Mi nombre es Teresa Cervantes. Mi nombre es Teresa Cervantes. Estamos aquí de la organización Lucha por 15. Estamos en solidaridad de, de todos los inmigrantes, inmigrantes, apoyando a los jóvenes de DACA que todos tienen el derecho de tener un futuro. I am here as part of Fight for 15 and to defend all of the immigrants and the DACA students. Um, uh, todos uh, los jóvenes tenemos derecho de tener un futuro de, 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 de todos los países. Todos aportamos a Estados Unidos, orientales o occidentales. All young people have the right to a future, and we are here to defend that right. No nos vamos a dar por vencidos. Tenemos que luchar por los jóvenes porque ese es el que dan a nuestro país, a nuestro futuro, a Estados Unidos. And we're not going to give up this fight and back down because we will stand with all the young people who are fighting for a future. Como todos tenemos familias uh, de diferentes razas, no vamos a, a soportar el racismo. Todos tenemos nuestros derechos y vamos a, a seguir luchando. And we're not going to let them divide us by race. And we're going to stand with everybody against racism and discrimination. And we are in the fight for the long haul. All right. Hello, I'm L.E. I'm one of the organizers for Northwest Indiana Resistance. You've probably seen me on the Facebook pages or on the Twitters or the Instagrams or anything like that. Yes. <laughs> and, and I do ask that anyone who is using social media right now to please uh, check in to the event, uh, Solidarity to End Deportations and Defend DACA. Most of you probably already seen it, but if you haven't, look it up and check in. Hashtag, do all your tweets and everything. Make your voices heard. Make sure everyone around the world hears that we will not stand for deportations out of any country, not just Gary. This is a global fight. But I would also like to give some special thanks to the people that um, did a lot of work today. Um, all the nice signs that you see, um, Thomas Frank and Vince Emanuele, they worked really hard to put together the art build last Sunday to get everyone together. Elizabeth. For, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, yes. I don't know where she is, but she has done so much to, um, and everything. Um, we want to thank the unions, uh, Calumet 5 or 350, Calumet Lives Matter, a lot of the people that are fighting environmental injustices in East Chicago, they turned out to help us here as well because racism comes in all forms, environmental, deportations, mass incarceration, 
the wage theft, uh, sexism, it, it comes in all shapes and sizes. And we are all going to turn out today, as we are all going to turn out tomorrow, to continue to fight all of these things. There will be more thank yous at the end, so keep, keep pushing. Yes. <laughs> okay, we have somebody who is here to talk to us about a struggle. Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Carmen Mata. My name is Carmen Mata. Yo vengo de San Quintín. ¿De San Quintín. San Quintín. Baja California. Baja California. Ah, San Quintín, Baja California. Baja California. Baja California. De los trabajadores de la fresa. Ah, strawberry workers. Sí. Yes. Y yo estoy aquí en apoyo con ustedes, hermanos. Son mis hermanos que los quiero. Y también estoy en contra de que este gobierno está deportando a muchos, a muchas personas. Cada viernes sabemos que deportan a muchos niños y a muchos adultos y están siendo separados de su familia. Y para mí eso es una injusticia. I, I can't possibly do that. <laughs> I am here in support of all of the young people who are fighting for their rights to remain here and also as a strawberry worker fighting to have safer workplaces and better conditions and to prevent the poisoning of your food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Estoy aquí porque yo estoy con ustedes. I am here because I am with you all. Woo! Yeah. Ustedes tienen una lucha. Yeah. You all have a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Nosotros también tenemos una lucha en contra de Driscoll. We also have a very big struggle against Driscoll that is a strawberry producer. Yo no quiero que haya más familias deportadas. I don't want to see more families deported. Yo no quiero que haya más niños y personas sufriendo. I don't want to see more children and people suffering. Por estas deportaciones. By because of these deportations. Yo no quiero que haya más dolor en las madres. I don't want to hear and feel the pain of the mothers. Tampoco quiero que haya dolor en los niños. No okay. quiero que haya dolor en los niños. And I don't want the young kids to have pain in their hearts. Que son separados de sus padres. Because they're separated from their parents. Queremos que DACA se respete. We want respect. For DACA. ¿Por qué? Porque muchos tienen el derecho de seguir estudiando. Because they have the right to continue studying. Y prepararse and prepare themselves. Porque los jóvenes because the young people son el futuro are the future de la nueva generación of the next generation. Y las personas mayores and the older people son la enseñanza are instructors, educators in this. Son la sabiduría they have the wisdom que nosotros tenemos, por ejemplo, that we need. Por eso hoy yo digo That's why today I say que se respete DACA. That you respect DACA. Yes. Y, y digo boycott a Driscoll's. And especially boycott Driscoll's. Driscoll's. Boycott que está lastimando boycott Driscoll's. Boycott Driscoll's. Boycott Driscoll's. Boycott Driscoll's. Boycott Driscoll's. Boycott Driscoll's. Gracias hermanos, muchas gracias hermanos. Thank you, brothers and Fuera el racismo. Get rid of racism. I think you understand that Gary is a majority black city. It is a city that has been colonized by Chicago. This airport does deportations because in the contract with Mayor Daley, it says that we can only do what Midway and O'Hare don't want to do. And so we do the deportations 
we get no jobs out of that. Yeah. We get nothing but heartache and pain. Yeah. And so we want to say that the struggle of all the people here in Gary for jobs, for decent living, for respect and recognition is part of the struggle of immigrants for the same thing. So I want to invite up another speaker who is in fact a DACA recipient. Hi everyone, my name is Sara Galvan Orozco. I'm here with um, El Centro de Trabajos Unidos. I'm here because I, I refuse to I refuse to apologize for being an immigrant. I feel like um, we all need to, we, we should never apologize for being here and for having our parents bring us here for a better opportunity. Because for me, I didn't have a choice, but, and I, but I do have a choice to stay and make a future out of, some, of my um, education. And I just want to thank everyone that's here for supporting us and supporting all the rights that need the support. And thank you very much. There are so many organizations supporting this, uh, which is wonderful. Though, of course, the next time we have to be twice as big. And I'm really sorry we got boxed in here because you won't get to see the buses. And they will come painted white with white over the windows so people cannot see out or in, it is revolting. They now have a new vehicle that they're using, which is a Ford truck redone over to carry immigrants, and it has a few windows up very high with no visibility in or out. It is inhuman. If you go to my Facebook page, Ruth Needleman, no. I have photos up there of all of this. And it's something you want to see because it will get you even angrier if that's possible. So now I want to invite up a sister Shelly from the UE. Hey. Thank you. Good morning. I bring greetings of solidarity from the members of the United Electrical, Radio, and Machine Workers of America, UE. An attack on immigrants is an attack on worker rights and the working and living conditions of all U.S. workers. We need a halt to deportations and all other harassment of immigrants. We need to work on a fair immigration system that raises the standard of living of all workers instead of driving it downward. Immigrants are not stealing our jobs. Immigrants are taking jobs that would otherwise go unfilled. Respect for labor and the people that do it is fundamental to all workers' rights. When we consider best how to treat immigrants, we should remember that we are a country of immigrants built by immigrants. We salute sisters Pat and Joanne for their hard work with the Interfaith Committee for Detained Immigrants. Thank you. I now invite Deborah from ATU 308. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deborah Lane. I'm the organizer for ATU Local 308 Woo! Rail Transportation. I see Eric Slater from 241. Um, we are so happy to come out and join this beautiful picture of what America needs to look like. All of us standing together as one fighting for justice for all. All of us in a melting pot of immigration if they want to know what immigrants look like, we are all immigrants. Exactly. We have to stand together because this, what they're doing with this DACA and deportation is, is a setback to modern day slavery. And it angers me because it reminds me of what they did to the four parents that came from Africa. They brought them over on slave ships with no windows and they took them away and broke up families. This America is founded on families. Family is full of love and united. And without families, we can't prosper. So what they're doing, bringing them here on buses with windows closed and taking them away, they're breaking families. So we all must stand together and continue to fight 
all of these rallies, all of these resistance shows the pure American way of we won't take the wrongness that these politicians, these big bankers are doing to us, even on our jobs. We must continue to fight. We must continue to stand. We must continue to unite with DACA. What's wrong with wanting to improve your life? Exactly. What's wrong with it? Nothing. And we have to stand together as one in love and unity. And we must fight back. Thank you all for coming. And remember, God loves you and ain't nothing you can do about it. It is overwhelming to see the support that we have because, you know, Gary is on the periphery of nothing. We are an abandoned city. We have 40% unemployment among black youth and all of the development is going into gentrification. They're making little pockets of wealth and they are forgetting the people who live here. We have a sister who came all the way from California and she is from the Sacramento chapter of LACLA. Hey. I want to say it's an absolute honor to be before my brothers and sisters here in Chicago. And uh, I want to say that uh, when I was a little girl, uh, when my parents were uh, on the great boycott for the United Farm Workers Union, we lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I feel like I'm really at home back east. All right, I, I walked a lot of picket lines back east. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Chicago, we traveled across this country on the great boycott. And right now, I'm back in Chicago. My name's Desiree Rojas. I'm the president of Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, uh, Sacramento chapter. We're a Latino, Chicano, Native, all peoples, all workers coalition a chapter. We represent everybody. We represent those who are disadvantaged at, from community, workers, unions, and also the current uh, issue with immigration. We're also working on DACA in California, too. But I want to say that right now, the importance of paying attention to what's happening in agriculture is very important, especially out of California and those states that are producing a lot of product. We are on a Driscoll boycott because people are being enslaved. Make no mistake about it. Children, look at this flyer. Children at the age of babies are sleeping in reservoirs while their parents pick these berries. No water being sprayed uh, over on their bodies with chemicals. We have people living in makeshift cardboard box housing with sticks holding them up. We have people who are working they're being pulled into trucks, and the back of those trucks are families, children, and they are being sent out to fields to work 14-hour days, and then when they're sent back in, they get a small wage for one daily meal. That is slavery at its worst, and we're talking about 80,000 workers. We need you to support the Driscoll boycott. We are all here and standing in uh, unity for our brothers and sisters and dacas like my sisters and, and brothers who have said before me that it's not their fault that children were forced to migrate here through the NAFTA agreement. The NAFTA agreement has caused poverty. It has hurt workers in the United States and in Mexico. It's enslaved people. We are, we need to take our unions back. We need to make our unions stronger. We need to send a message to Washington that we're not messing around, that the people and the workers have the power. And we are not going to stop fighting, resist, be a part of this boycott. Right now in California, they're pushing another boycott. They're using fracking water uh, to feed the trees of uh, halo oranges. And you know that palm, pomegranate juice that everyone likes so much? I love that juice. I'm not buying that juice no more. They're using contaminated fracking oil water to feed those trees. And that's poison. That's feeding our kids poison. Are we going to let that happen? No. Hell no. Are we going to let that happen? No. We are going to take back, we are going to take back our power from these corporations, the global corporate uh, machine that is stealing food and clean water from people and citizens all over the world. 
Trust me, what is happening here is happening all over the world. I just came back from Europe and I found out that in Europe, a lot of the water, bottled water there is coming straight out of the groundwater of California. And there are towns in California that are out of water. There's no more groundwater. They are shipping water by, by, by big canisters and plastic bottles to homes and communities in California. And we have to say no. We need to protect our land, protect our water, protect workers, protect farm workers, protect DACA, protect yeah. our unions. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear you say, si se puede. Si se puede. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. Aquí estamos. nothing like a strong labor voice to get us going. I want to read a statement from our state senator, Eddie Melton. He hoped to be here. He got called down to Indianapolis. Eddie is a new state senator from Gary, and he has been fighting for health care. He's been fighting for jobs. He's been fighting the contamination in East Chicago. And I might mention, if you want to know more about East Chicago, our wonderful friend here, Thomas Frank, will be doing a toxic tour, leaving from Chicago on November 4th, and we'll get you more information on it. It will be free. Here is Eddie's statement. First, I would like to apologize for not being able to make it to this event today. But rest assured, I am with you in mind and spirit when it comes to this particular fight for inclusion and civil rights. My colleagues and I in the Senate Democratic Caucus are in Indianapolis forming our legislative priorities for 2018. And I guarantee you that immigration issues, the DACA program, and DREAMers will be in the discussion for our agenda next year. Ever since the Indiana State Democrats formulated the Latino Roundtable Working Group of Legislators, Policy Experts, Community and Faith Leaders, we have been in this fight which has never been more important. Immigration has long been a complex topic in a country that was originally founded on freedom and diversity. I gotta just interrupt. It was founded on slavery. And we can't forget that the original people in this country are not us white-looking Europeans. Um, we came as settlers. African Americans came as slaves. Native Americans have been pushed off their land. And our history just needs to be taken into account. We cannot pretend that this country was founded on justice. Sorry. Sorry, Eddie. <laughs> okay. Um, the bus isn't here yet, but okay. if, when it comes, they'll be able to see us from the corner. Okay, uh, the buses are not here yet, but we might be able to get a view of them from the corner, and we'll let you know the... Um, the plane has landed. It's a world Atlantic plane that disguises itself as Caribbean sun. And they have a contract with ICE. And the contract is through the jet center. And so it's very likely our next protest will be at the jet center. Okay, uh, let me finish this off. We are... <laughs> Sorry, Eddie, that I interrupted you. <laughs> we are a melting pot, and we are at our strongest when we come together, not when we enact policies that divide us. Indiana is only one of three states that has a law specifically prohibiting students from receiving in-state tuition rates. We know the kind of contributions that these young, smart, and courageous students can provide to our universities and to our state's economy. We must stand up for them, and if we don't, we will be the losers. Keep the fighting, keep fighting the good fight. I promise I will as well, and let's be a voice for the people 
that this administration seeks to silence. Um, I have here, can't keep my papers apart, um, Reverend Timothy Whitesky from Trinity Lutheran of Valparaiso. I'm the pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church in Valparaiso, Indiana. I'm, I'm here because of the story of what's going on here today is a story that uh, resonates with several that are very dear to me. One of them in particular, it's at the very beginning of the Gospel of Matthew. When a young boy is born in abject poverty and the king feels that he is a threat to him. And an angel warns his father, you'd better get out of here. And that young boy's father, Joseph, packs up his son, Jesus, and his wife, Mary, and they run away to Egypt. And I cannot help but wonder what would happen if when they had gotten to Egypt, the Egyptian immigration authorities came by and said, sorry, you have to go back to Herod's death squads. Our story as Christians is a story of a God who becomes an immigrant. That's the very first thing God does is get born and run away because it is not safe where he is. God is an immigrant, and what's more, God's people have been immigrants throughout the story. Jesus' father has the same name as a very famous immigrant, Joseph, sold into slavery by his brothers, and he doesn't leech off the system. He becomes prime minister of Egypt. And when his family comes begging for food, he doesn't say, sorry, Egypt's full, there's no food. He says, get dad down here with you for crying out loud. As Christians, we know God is with the weakest and the most vulnerable, and immigrants are vulnerable. Our society makes sure they're vulnerable, and we Christians are going to stand with them. We know that we have been immigrants in the past and may wind up being immigrants in our own lifetimes. And so we are here in solidarity with those who find themselves there today. The churches are divided on this issue, I know. I can't speak for every single Christian. I do think I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. If you believe in God, if you believe that God became human and was born in a stable in Bethlehem, you are with the immigrants, or you don't actually believe what you say you believe. That is why I am here. It is wonderful to see everybody who is here today. Thank you. There is this weekend more than this protest. There is a conference for national labor solidarity being held at UAW Local 551. And the reason we have so much good support from labor, especially on the West Coast, is because of this conference. So I invite the Vice President of Local UAW 551 to say a few words. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I want to formally invite each and every one of you to come to our conference. Our Union Hall is located on Torrance Avenue on the south side of Chicago, uh, 13550 South Torrance Avenue. The conference is going to be going on for three days. And during those three days, we're going to be coming up with ways to come together and uh, join together in, in solidarity across uh, unions, across non-union workers, across borders. Because this attack is not just an attack on immigrants. It's an attack on the working class. It's an attack on all of us. It's a corporate attack. These tra trade agreements, like NAFTA, that have ruined the lives of so many workers across all the borders, is a, a, a trade agreement that is for corporations and against workers. It opens the borders for corporations to go wherever they want to seek whatever profits they can extract from us yeah. at, the, at the cost of our humanity. They want us to be nationalistic. They want us to salute the flag. And at the same time, they want to repress all of us. They want to extract the profits out of our labor. But we have the power in our hands to withhold that labor. And that's something that we need to learn and that we need to relearn because uh, the labor movement has been on the decline. But we have 
in front of us over here the fight for 15 that's at the forefront of the labor movement thank you for what you've done thank you for reawakening the labor movement and the immigrant the immigrant workers that are here from Driscoll's that have been suffering in the fields okay that I'm told the buses are on their way they're coming in now so thank you very much and come to our conference yes, yes. Go see if you can get a look, and then we will meet back here to conclude. That way. Oh, my body is sore. No more deportations. 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 Defend DACA signs, uh, NWI resists. Not one more! 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 When immigrant rights are under attack, momentarily has talked to every single immigrant on those buses and they are our neighbors they are people who are here because they want to be with their family they don't want to get killed in Mexico they want a job and they are contributing and so they will be brought from there the bus We'll let them off, they'll climb into the airplane. The airplane just landed from Brownsville. It will then go to Kansas City, where it will pick up more. Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! When working people are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When immigrant families are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Fight back. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. What do we do? Se puede o no se puede. 
disempowered those people remind me that the struggle continues and that we must always struggle as a community and you know we wanted to make an announcement about a welcoming city ordinance that Ruth led the way here and Gary at getting passed Alfredo Estrada an attorney from Lake County has head up these efforts throughout the region in Indiana for those who aren't aware sanctuary cities are illegal the best we could do in this state is the ordinance that was crafted by Alfredo Estrada and his team. It's called a Welcoming City Ordinance. We're trying to get them passed throughout Northwest Indiana. Right now, where I live in Michigan City, Indiana, the Michigan City Social Justice Group and Politics, Art, Roots, and Culture are organizing and fighting for this effort. We're having an event this Saturday, I'm sorry, October 14th, so next Saturday, at our venue in Michigan City. That's 1713 Franklin Street. Alfredo Estrada is going to be there. He's going to explain the ordinance to our community members and our elected officials, and we're going to expect them to pass it within the next month. Now, let me say something. There's a lot of folks I've been talking to since Trump got elected. They're scared to go out. They're scared to knock on doors. They're worried that their neighbors don't care. They're worried that their family members are going to be mean to them or whatever they're worried about. But let me tell you, we knocked on well over a thousand doors over the last week and a half in Michigan City, Indiana. And the overwhelming, the overwhelming number of people in Michigan City, Indiana, black, white, brown, and otherwise, support the ordinance. And they want to stand in solidarity with their neighbors. So let's stop being afraid of each other. Let's stop assuming that people just don't give a shit or that they're too scared to come out. They like to see people who are organizing. Organizing breeds more organizing. So let's get rid of the cynicism, and let's remember, as Ruth said, that we will win. I also want to turn folks on to an event that's taking place on Friday and Thursday in Chicago next week. That's the Poor People's Campaign. Who here is aware of the Poor People's Campaign? Yes! Are there people here who are going to attend that event? Yes! Right on. So I will see you next week as well. Go to the website, poorpeoplescampaign.com and you will find all of the information for the upcoming events. It's been a pleasure to work with everyone here, and I would just like to say that I, for one, am actually for deportations, but I want to deport the bosses, the bankers, the CEOs, and the congressmen. So, thanks to everyone who came out, Carl from EU, uh, Susan, Hurley, Ruth, Lori, all the folks who put this on. It's a pleasure to work with y'all. Love we need to sustain the fight the love that washes mountains to the sea and breaks rocks and that makes us as strong as your will. We pray for those poor people on the plane now who are having one of their worst days. Let them take heart. Walk with them as you always do. Bring them to safe places and we pray bring them back here too if that is their wish. Now send us on our way, knowing that we have not just completed, but that we are beginning again. And help us not to build walls around ourselves, but to reach out to those who need to be persuaded or won over. And it is in your name we pray. Amen.